Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem two from quiz nine, fall 2023, Math 307, Linear Algebra at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we are given a vector space V. In fact, it's an inner product space. Over field F, of course, uh, usually for us when we're talking about inner product spaces, our F is a real is the reals or the complex numbers. Uh, we're also given a linear operator T on V, and we want to prove that if T has an upper triangular matrix with respect to some basis of V, uh, which of course can happen, right? We know if, for example, F is equal to complex numbers, we're guaranteed that well, there'll be some basis with respect to which T has an upper triangular matrix. But even over the reals, it could happen. And so if it does happen, then the claim is that T has an upper triangular matrix not just res with respect to some basis, but even with respect to some orthonormal basis of V. So uh, there we go. Let's, uh, let's see if we can prove this. So what we're going to take as a given is that we have the Gram-Schmidt method. The Gram-Schmidt method, right? So the Gram-Schmidt method is going to take a basis and it's going to turn it into an orthonormal basis, right? We call it an ON basis. Now, strictly speaking, right, it works in two stages the way we did it. We use this modified method. First, it gives you an orthogonal basis, then it normalizes it. So to me, it's really the orthogonal part that's the interesting part of Gram-Schmidt, the normality you can always kind of do. So, so let's talk about that. Um, when I orthogonalize, right? What's actually happening? Because normalizing, I'm just multiplying by a scalar, uh, and that's not really going to change a whole lot of things. But when I orthogonalize, right, what is our, what's our method here, right? So I have, say, some basis, v1 through vn, right? That could be our, maybe a, a b. Um, and then I'm going to use Gram-Schmidt to produce a new basis, w1 through wn, all right, and so maybe uh, this could be, uh, I don't know, a new basis. We'll call this um, B-O. Why O? <laughs> because, well, B-O. But no, because we're going to make this O basis. All right, we're going to orthogonalize. And how do we do that, right? So, of course, we know W1 is going to be V1. And then in general, if I wanted to compute WK, I'm going to produce this by taking V sub K, and then I'm going to subtract a bunch of stuff. And what do the stuff look? What does it look like? So I'm going to take VK, and I'm going to take the inner product with, say, some WI. All right now, mind you, we're building this a piece at a time, right? We build W1, then W2, etc. So these I's here are going to be things that are less than K. So I've already computed them already. And then I can divide by the square of the norm of the WI's. And this gives me some scalar, and I'll multiply that by the vector wi. Okay, but I'm going to put the i up top here so that we're using Einstein uh, notation, uh, which means I'm summing over the i's. Then I'll put a little iris in bracket here. So the i here is in 1 through k minus 1. Okay, so this is a sum uh, right over the i's, but only the i's up to, well, 1 below the k. All right, and what's really nice here is we know that each of these WIs was produced in the same way, which means that each one of them was built up out of, well, linear combination to the previous Ws. And if you go all the way back to the beginning, you saw that W1 actually is just V1, which means a consequence of the way we use the Gram-Schmidt or we build the Gram-Schmidt uh, orthogonal basis is that the span of this orthogonal basis is exactly equal to the span of the original basis, i.e. it's W1 through Wn is still a basis, all right? Um, even if, in fact, even if we stopped along the way, so let's say I went W1 through Wk, that would just be the span of V1 through Vk. All right, so this and this works for all k. So this is going to be useful when we try to look at the matrix, right, for 
the operator T with respect to B or BO. Now, of course, we could keep going and normalize. And the nice thing when we normalize, right, is it's not really going to change the span at all. So I could keep going down here and I could get my orthonormal basis, E1 through EN, and this can be BON, all right, so an orthonormal basis. But remember the way we get those E's, right? So if I wanted to compute EK, this will just be one over the, oops, one over the norm of WK times WK. So it's just scaling it. And again, this doesn't change the span. So the span of E1 through, say, some EK is still just going to be the span of W1 through WK, which was already the span of V1 through VK. All right, because again, we're just scaling each vector. When you scale a vector in your list, it doesn't change the span. Okay, so now how does this all relate to the matrix, right? Well, our assumption at the beginning, right, was that T had an upper triangular uh, matrix with respect to some basis, right? Okay, this B up here, right, that's going to be the matrix that we're saying T was upper triangular with respect to. So M of T comma B, we know had the form of an upper triangular matrix. Okay, and so if we had V1, V2, dot, 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 VN, V1, V2, VN, we see here that the span of V1 through VK, well, when you apply T to V1, you just get a multiple of V1. When you apply T to V2, you get a multiple of V1 plus a multiple of V2, and then you get all zeros. So in general, the span of V1 through VK is contained, oh, when I apply T to it, this will be contained in the span of V1 through VK. All right? And you remember, this actually was a property, right? of course this is for all K, this is a property that characterizes upper triangular matrices. Okay, so what happens when we take the matrix of T with respect to the orthonormal basis we built, right? The E1 through ENs up above. Well, now we have E1... E2, dot, 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 EN, E1, E2, EN. But we know that if I take T of the span of E1 through EK, well, we set up above. The span of E1 through EK is actually the same as the span of V1 through VK. So this is T of the span of V1 through VK. But we already know T of the span of V1 through VK is contained in the span of V1 through VK, which again we know is equal to the span of E1 through EK. And this works for all K. And again, this property characterizes upper triangular matrices, and therefore we must have an upper triangular matrix. So this implies the matrix of T with respect to BON is upper triangular. And there we go. All right, so this is actually quite nice. When we use the Gram-Schmidt method, we don't lose the upper triangular property. So if we can put our matrix into upper triangular form, then we can orthonormalize the basis, right? We don't have to worry that, oh, you know, if we mess up one, we're going to mess up the other, right? We can just start, do them one at a time, handle the tri upper triangular part first, then get your orthonormal basis. Okay, everybody, we will see you next time.